Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Headers, Footers, Knees, and Toes webinar. Uh, I'm your host, Jan Bobot, and I'm going to teach you how to make amazing uh, headers and, and explain to you um, and explain to you the trending headers that we see nowadays. And of course, I'm going to give you also a small overview uh, of how to make and why do we need to make footers. Um, so let's go. Okay, so. First of all, it's important to for you guys to understand that nowadays people, a lot of designers, a lot of uh, big companies are using the idea of, of the full width. Okay, um, it's a huge trend uh, in the web design. Uh, in web design, um, here in Webidoo, we call it full width header. header. Okay, to make a full width header, I'm going to teach you how to make a full width header. Um, and let's start. Okay, now also. Full, not only full width headers are extremely popular, but fixed headers. What are fixed headers? Fixed headers are sort of these pinned uh, headers that we see when we scroll. They follow us. Um, this is where we we keep seeing the same links, the same menu that follows us when we continue scrolling. Uh, and this is exactly what we're going to do today. Okay, so fixed headers. As Before I get into it, uh, I would definitely like to show you something extremely extremely cool and this is what we're going to review today um, this is going to be one of the headers that we're going to do um, if you go on the same theme that we did in the previous webinar it's called freelancer.webidu.com I can I'm just gonna paste it here on our chat you're gonna see that when you scroll the header will suddenly appear and follow you while you scroll And this is exactly what we're going to do now. The header itself is pretty cool because right now you see kind of a uh, kind of a menu that is white, and when you roll over it, changes color. Cool. But when I scroll down the website, I see that I have a logo on my left. I have a different type of colored menu, and this is exactly what we're going to do today. So, first of all, I'm just going to go here. And I'm going to show you how to make a normal header. So I would like to unrepeat those. And I'm going to show you how to repeat those elements. So first off, just a small note there. Um, I normally, when I create my menu, I always create it th uh, throughout the end. When I finish designing my website, at the end, I do my menu. Why? Because if, let's say, I'm adding a, uh, a certain animation on, on the menu, I don't want it to appear while I'm working on, on the website. I want to finish the website, everything's static, and whatever animation I do, I put, uh, I do it at the end. Okay, so let's see exactly how we're going to do our fixed menu. So, number one, we start with a shape. A shape here, if you look on the design panel, right under the position tab, you're going to see fit to width. Okay, so if I check it, it's going to fit to width. Now you can choose the size. We're just going to keep it at 80, and now we're just going to simply design it a bit. So I want it to be white or any color that you want. Stroke, we don't need it. Shadow, let's put a nice shadow into it. Let's put a nice sort of gray. We're going to make a very quick size. We'll make it five. Oops, sorry. And the opacity will be 10. And you can see my menu is nice. Now that I'm done with it, again, I'm going to go back to the position. Something that I forgot to mention, this is most of the time I use position tab. Okay, You might not use it a lot. I use it most of the time. Okay, My Y axis will be 0. Boom. It's at the beginning of my website. Okay, Spread between the 7. Oops. Size. Two and five, that's better. Okay, so this is at zero. Now, if I scroll down, it's not following me. To make it follow you, to make it fix, pinned, you right click on the element itself. Oh, by the way, I need to take off the guides. Sorry, I don't wanna confuse you. I'm gonna click on my element, which is my full width shape. I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna click on pin position. All good? Now, when I scroll down, it scrolls down with me. Next, 
So we're going to do one by one. So the first thing that we need to do here, shape fit to width. Again, we'll get, we're going to add shadow to make it look nicer, pin it or unpin it, however you want to do it. And then we're going to create an, a menu and we're going to explain the normal, the rollover and the active. So this is the menu. This is the main menu. Okay. Inside that menu, I'm going to click here. I'm going to choose my font. This is the first thing that I do. I choose my font. Okay. So my font will be Mosra Light. Amazing. And then I'm going to go to fill. I don't want to fill it with anything else. Um, my font color will be, so this is again, will be completely blue, let's say. This blue. So this will be on top of my shape. So in regards to the menu, I don't know if you guys noticed, but to make a menu, and I highly suggest uh, going through uh, one of my webinars on menus, um, I have a normal state, a rollover, a rollover state, and an active state. So the normal, I'm just customizing my normal state. So stroke, I don't want any strokes. Again, this is the normal, uh, uh, normal um, state. This is the one that I want you guys to see. My rollover is when I roll over it. And the active is the one that is selected. So the size, I can choose the size or I can basically just do a dynamic menu. A dynamic menu, the animation of the dynamic menu follows the length of the characters that are that are inside the menu. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put a certain margin of 25. And here 25 as well. And now that I'm done with it, I'm going to go on my, by the way, I can still pin it and put it at the top so that everybody can see. There you go. I'm going to click inside again. Rollover. So my rollover, oops, sorry. My rollover, I would like to change it to blue. Uh, I'm going to make a bottom stroke of two. Change the color to the same blue. Oh, my bad. I need to redo a few things. Sometimes when you click elsewhere and then you continue the menu, you need sometimes it's a tiny bit buggy. So two, change the color to this. Like that. And voila. So already when I'm rolling over it, it changes color. And again, it is pinned, meaning that I can still scroll down and have my menu. Okay. So I'm just going to put it here. So next. So again, what I said before is that we need to pin the shape first and then pin the menu and then add image and then pin the image. So the image that we're looking for is not actually an image. It's just text. It's right here. Okay, I'm just going to copy it. Again, you can copy an element and put it on another page of the website. Paste. There you go. I just need to remove parallax animation. There you go. So this is, let's say, my image or my element, in other words. And I'm going to pin it at the end. And then I'm going to put it here. Okay, what color is it? Let's make the menu the same color. My normal state, I want it to be like that. Oh, no stroke on my normal state, this. Roll over. Amazing. That's it, we're done. Um, now, questions, I will be just letting you guys know, I will be answering towards the end. I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a small break for around five minutes for questioning. And then at the end, I'm going to give a good 10 minutes for, to answer questions. So now I have set up my whole pin menu. Okay. So next, what are exactly parallax headers? So as you saw previously, this is sort of a, uh, uh, on on the, the website that I shared with you, this is basically the parallax header, 
okay? What we did right now is a pin header, okay? A menu that is pinned and that follows us. What we're going to do is a parallax header, a header that appears, a menu that appears uh, upon, roll, uh, uh, upon scrolling down uh, throughout the website. So number one, what do we need to do? So here are the steps to build our parallax header. Number one, shape fit to width. So again, I'm going to show you, I'm going to send you guys this presentation, and this is kind of a, a good guideline for you to follow. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do basically everything live. So this I would like to take off. Okay, I would like to unpin it. Okay, so this is just a simple shape fit to width, and the menu also is a simple menu that I create. All good up until now? Cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on my header, on my shape fit to width, and I'm going to click on add parallax animation. Now be very, very, very attentive to what I'm going to tell you. When you click on parallax animation, add parallax animation beta, two things will be popping out of the, of the element itself. Number one is a black line. Number two is a, uh, a blue shape fit to width also, the same shape but in blue. This is the motion path, meaning that where do you, where are you leading the the element, the shape fit to width? If I go on preview right now, remember the black line is my starting line, okay? If I scroll down, it scrolls with me, like that, okay? Now what I wanna do, because the black lines, okay, so number one, the black line is my starting point. When the top of my website, will reach to the black line, my parallax animation will start. Cool? Now, my blue, my blue element, my motion path, let's call it the motion path, is the motion that I'm setting it up, okay? To where I want it and to do basically what I want it to do. So number one, what I want to do in terms of a header is that I want my starting line to be when the top of my website reaches the top of, a, of my shape fit to width. My motion path will stay at the same place at my shape fit to width location, which is here on my design panel. I'm gonna see Y 110. If I go right now on my properties panel and something that kind of cool to show, this is why I like being precise, is that on my properties panel, I'm going to have something called parallax scrolling animation tab. And under the tab, I'm going to have my parallax properties. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is my target doesn't have a target, doesn't have an X because my X is 100%, but my Y will be 110. So I know that right away, my motion is at the same place as my element, okay? And this is where we're going to customize a few things, okay? I'm just gonna put this on the side. The speed of the, the parallax animation. So when we scroll down, okay, let's say I'm scrolling down right now, the top of my website reaches that black line. What happens? So I want it, I want the speed to be very fast. I want it to be completely pinned very fast. I don't want it to go right now. As you can see, it's 1.5 pixels per scroll. I want to change it to something much faster. I generally go around 80. 80 is fine. Okay. So 80 pixels per scroll. When I every scroll that every pixel that I scroll, it attaches, it goes by 80 pixels. Okay. So here I can also add effects. What effect am I going to put? Number one, I don't want the menu, I don't want the header to appear when I'm loading the page. I want the header to disappear. And when I get to my starting point, I want it to appear. So this is number one that I want to do. Then I want it to be, I want it, I want it to be pinned to the top of my website. So number one, you always go in or in order. What do you want it to do? Number one, you want it to fade to 100%. That's number one, fade to. You can add another effect. The effect that we want for it to be pinned is the delay after, okay? What is the delay after? So let me explain to you what the delay after is, okay? The delay after 
it simply it, it simply means if let's say I get here, get to the top of my shape, okay, that means that my parallax animation starts, okay, um, and when it starts, it's going to delay, it's going to stick after a hundred pixels, and then it's going to leave, okay. This is the delay after. Now, what we want to do is that we want it we want it to delay after the maximum amount of pixels. Now, the maximum amount of pixels here is, let's say, 6,885, okay? So my delay after will be either 6,886 or higher. That's basically it. That's how it works. If I go now and publish it, sorry. I don't see my header. I don't see, sorry, I don't see my shape fit to width. And slowly, slowly, I'm gonna scroll down and you're gonna see that it's gonna oop, appear. And that's it, it appears. But when I go scroll back up, it disappears. And this is exactly how the parallax animation and parallax headers work. Now, what happens if I want to play around with my menu? If I want my menu to do exactly the same thing, meaning that at the beginning, there's no menu. But when I scroll, when my, my starting line starts, it's going to scroll with my uh, shape fit to width. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click on the menu and already I'm going to do add parallax animation. I'm going to put it to the complete center. Now, something to point out, we want everything to start at the same starting line at the same time. So if my shape starts here, where the black line is, I want my the black line for my menu to start exactly at the same position. That's why I put a guide, and then my black line will be in the same exact position as my shape. Okay. Now we know that x equal 96, so my target here, which is on my right, is going to be 96, and then my y is 128, so my y is 128. That's it. Now, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, speed, 80 pixels per scroll. We're going to add two effects. One effect is the fade to. Second effect is the delay after. And the delay after will be, let's say, 7,000. We don't care as long as it is it's more than 8, uh, 6,886 like we did before, which is the length of my whole website. Now, we're going to publish, and let's see what it gives. Let's see the result all together. There you go. My menu appears, as you can all see. Okay, so let's review very quickly. So again, to make the parallax, a parallax header, you need to shape fit to width. You need to set the black line at the top of the shape like we did before. Um, the motion dotted shape, which is kind of the, my motion path, okay? Um, the target will be the, at the same position as my shape fit to width. Okay, my speed, we're going to make it pretty fast, so 80 pixels per scroll. My first effect will be fade to 100%, and my second effect will be delay after 5,000 pixels or more, depending on the length of my website. So again, just to explain um, explain the, the effect one, which is fade to 100%, this is the first thing that we need to do. We want it to fade to 100% very fast. We don't need to, it to be very slow. We want it to fade very fast so we want it to fade to 100 percent and the delay after we want it to delay after x amount of pixels depending on the length of my website so this is for the shape now for the menu you do exactly the same thing so we're going to call it parallax animation on the menu parallax animation menu pam so the black line is going to be the same exact line as the uh, black line as the shape okay so both of them will start at the same time. So the black line of the shape will be exactly at the same time as the black line of the menu. Okay. Uh, this, it, uh, the parallax animation um, of the menu, the, 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 is the, the target of the parallax animation of the menu is going to be the same as the menu position. And same thing goes for effect one and effect Two. So I'm going to give you around five minutes to ask questions. Please let me know. Let me know if you guys want me to repeat anything. So go ahead, please.
Okay, so we have a question, so I'll, I'll try to read it clearly. Why is my menu behind the shape and it does not change when I bring it to the front? Okay, so, um, okay, I kind, of, uh, I kind of understand. If I go back on my studio, this is kind of what's going to happen. So the first thing that you did is that you pinned this first, and then you pinned the header, the shape fit to it. Now the thing is, if you go here and you go, maybe it's gonna work for me. Um, weird. Would try putting the shape uh, behind the menu, not the menu in front of the shape. Okay, this is a question from Roger Feller uh, that is having a problem putting the menu behind uh, menu in front of the shape or the shape behind. So always try both ways. So it's either the menu to the front or the shape to the back. So try both. Tell me how it goes. So this is the bonus header. What are we going to do at the bonus header? So we're going to do a huge, complicated, amazing parallax header. So try to imagine putting a bunch of things, making a few things appear, a few things don't appear. So again, stay put with me. And we're going to concentrate a lot on the delay after effects. OK? OK, so what we want to do, basically, so let's say I want to scroll down, okay, and when I reach here, I have a different type, I have a different colored menu, a different uh, shape fit to it, um, sort of a different type of anything, basically, okay? So what I want to do, first of all, let's just prepare everything. I keep forgetting why I close the design panel every time. So shape fit, uh, shape fit to width. Let's color it in blue, make a small five, vertical five, four. I love playing around with it. Um, so this is basically my shape. Let's do the menu as well. So uh, duplicate. Oops, sorry, I'm just gonna remove my parallax animation so that I can move the menu down a bit. So inside the menu, let's customize the menu. Again, I took off, took this off. So normal will be white. Cool, rollover will be, say purple. Yeah, purple looks nice. Purple looks nice. And the active will be purple as well. OK. So again, what I'm going to do is really, really cool. OK. Um, stay with me. Again, I just want to copy this. Copy, 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 copy. And paste it here. There you go, and remove parallax animation. Just gonna put it here for now. Okay. Well, and duplicate it. Oh, let's just add the parallax animation so that we're good. So my black line is the same as the top of my uh, shapes black line, my parallax animation. I'm gonna put this here. Now, My shape is minus 72, 130. Here is minus 72, 130. Speed, add effect, add another effect. Uh, fine, doesn't matter for now, OK? Here, what I want to do is basically the idea is that, sorry guys, just going to put it outside for now. The idea is for, and pay attention when I scroll down, I want it to be pinned, and but when I reach here, I want the menu to change and have this to be the menu, okay? So this is kind of a bit complicated, so bear with me on this one. Change the whole text to 
white because this is supposed to be my a logo, let's say. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to start the parallax animations. Cool. So now that it's here, I can start. So you start the parallax animation as if nothing, as if your your menu, your header starts here, okay, at the complete center of your website. So add parallax animation. We're going to put the black line here. It's always good to put a guide so that you don't forget, okay. Um, my y axis is 1848, so 1848, 80, add effect, fade two, and then delay after, let's do 5000. Okay, next we have my beautiful menu, add parallax animation. We're going to put it here. Good. So y 117 and uh, oh, x y 117 and y 1871. Okay. So eating at effect delay after. Oh, say two and delay after. Cool. We're gonna do the same thing with. This add parallax animation. Black line. Oh, did I? Oh, I forgot the black line for the menu. Black line for the menu is supposed to be on blue guide and the logo as well. Okay. What is the logo? Minus 72, 1874. Minus 72. And eighteen seventy four speed eighty add effect fade two delay after amazing. So I just created the menu as if nothing happened. Okay, this is the idea. I have a new header here. Now, what happens when I finish with this header? When does it finishes? Like what? Like when does it finish? Sorry. Um, what I want to do is to show you exactly the idea of the delay after. So here I put something called um, a guide. Okay. If you want to know how to find your guides, number one, you go to your rulers, select your rulers. They're at the top, like in Photoshop, and just click and drag from the ruler to whatever position you want. You can double click on it can change its color, put a specific position, and delete it. All good? So now, from what I remember, I put a guide here, OK? My guide is at 1847, OK? This means that my delay after, it starts at, oops, sorry, it starts at 110. My animation starts at 110. And my second animation starts at 1847. So 1847 minus 110, 1737. What we want to do is that we want the delay after to finish after 1737. So all my delays after will be 1737. Why? Because the pixels between here and here are 1837. So this is exactly what we're going to do. What is it again? 1737. 1737. This I already did. 1737. And now let's publish it. Okay, let's see if it was good. So I'm gonna scroll down and let's see if I did it right. And boom, my menu appears, my header appears. Now, again, you guys don't see 
the second menu that I, the second header that I put. Why? Because they're it, they have uh, a fade to 100%. So I'm going to scroll down, and after 18, it should go down and it changes menu. Okay, so it's not perfect yet. It's not perfect yet. Okay, I get it. So what happens is that at the top of my site, when it reaches here, the change happens. What we want it to do is that it changes before. So since my shape fit to width is 80, 80 pixels high, we want to take this. Oh, sorry. We want to take, sorry, these and make 1737 minus 80. 1657. You can continue asking. You can ask questions. I'm gonna answer you guys later. Fifteen sixty-seven. Is that it? Oh, sixteen fifty-seven. Let's publish it and try it out. All good and amazing. So as you can see, I have two types of header, and they actually change, which is really amazing. It finishes, and boom, I have my second header. So what did I just do? What I actually changed, and this is kind of a sheet that you're going to review as well, what I actually changed is my delay after. My delay after, meaning that it's going to delay for a, an amount of pixels. Okay, but I need to take off something. I need to take off my starting my starting point, meaning that the amount uh, when it starts and when it should end, minus the height of my shape. Okay, because I want it to finish beforehand. Okay, before it, the top of my website reaches the second header. Okay, so again. I'm just going to go down with the first image, apply parallax animation, and pro apply the same principles as the parallax header. Again, with the black line, the motion dotted shape. Uh, again, you guys all know, um, like I did previously, how to make that happen. Uh, now, effect three is menu change. Okay, it was that simple. I'm going to let you guys ask around five minute questions, and then we're going to go and review the header very quickly. Um, and then I'm going to give you more time to ask questions. Okay, so why is the upper part of my menu blue shape is hidden? Because I don't want them to, see, I don't want my users to see that menu. I want, this is from Randy Pillard, I don't want them to see my menu yet. I don't want them to see my new header. I want them to see the effect that, I, that I'm trying to show you guys is basically to show you how I can actually change um, my header, my header color. In a lot of websites, you see some cool uh, animations such as uh, the header being changed to different colors. So this is the idea. The idea is not to show two headers. It's to show one and to actually change its color completely. Okay, we have another question from Wim. Okay, why not just avoid all this, all this complicated animation, just go with pinned elements? Pinned elements, basically, they, they don't disappear. Meaning that if you had, for example, uh, a pinned element and you scroll with it, it's still going to be there. It's color, everything. The element won't disappear. And putting a shape on it, I don't think it'll it'll be that nice. I think it it'll still be noticeable. Okay. Now the idea of the parallax animation, of course, you can go straight ahead and do the first thing that you see, which is pin your elements like I did at the beginning of the webinar. Go ahead, by all means. Uh, but if you want to make your site much more interesting and change colors and do some nice parallax animation, for sure, go ahead um, and do this and 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 do basically this. Uh, what I just uh, what I just did right now, um, but I do think I do th depends with you depends how you you design your website. 
I hope that answered that question. Okay, doesn't mean, okay, we have a question from Patrick. Doesn't mean in every individual site must be the same long. No, every site has its own uh, length. Okay, now between length B and length A, there is a certain number of length. That's why I uh, applied my uh, amazing parallax animation. That's basically it. So just to clarify, because we have a question from from Thomas in regards to um, to um, to animation being uh, responsive on different layouts. Um, generally, the animations or WebD are not made for for them to be on um, on tablet, landscape, and mobile. Okay, if they are, then it's a bug that actually makes us happy. If not, uh, it's just the way that it's designed. Now, um, I suggested before because maybe it could work to add a parallax animation within the uh, within the tablet or landscape or mobile layout and see if it works. But generally, uh, it's not made for it to work on any uh, of those layouts. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna quickly go over a few questions. What happens uh, when I repeat the menu on other sides? It repeats the same animation, same everything. Okay. Um, I said to add the menu at the end of the designing process. Yes, yes, of course, because um, when you put a lot of animation in it and you want to change something, when you finish a, a website, you always go over what you did. You want to make sure everything is, is properly uh, designed, everything is in order, everything has a certain amount of spacing. You don't want the menu to follow you or you don't want to mess, mess around or click by accident a certain element. That's why I always put the menu at the end because if let's say I'm doing a certain animation to it, then I would like it to be um, I would like it to be th towards the end. I, I would like to review the site, make sure that the site looks well, um, and then put them in. So let's continue. So again, a lot of a, a, a lot of my uh, previous clients and a lot of designers, I've I've seen that they they don't put a uh, they don't put a footer. Um, but again, it's important to have a footer. It's important to a footer is made uh, for the user to find itself wherever he is on the website. The, the user needs to, to, to see contact information. You want that to be on mo on all the pages. That's number one. You want it to be, you, you can have a contact form. You can have, um, most of the time you see on footers, uh, they have uh, the same menu, okay? Uh, it's sort of a guide to, to show you, okay, where you are, where you can be, um, how to find me. Uh, basically, that's, that's, that's what you want to, f to show the user. You want to show, you want to, it's sort of, um, it's sort of, oh, are you lost? Then go down and click wherever you want to be, okay? Um, having an email address is extremely important. Phone numbers. Um, also, I know I wrote down that footer should contain also copyright information such as copyright 2013, Christopher Murray, web design, all rights reserved, uh, something like that, you know, nothing, uh, it's always good to have it, um, you know, just to protect your, your rights of ownership. Now, also, again, remember, footers should have menus, if not a contact, contact information form, um, basically anything to lead the user to either contact you or to find itself throughout uh, one of the pages. That's basically it. Okay. Um, I put three things, but these these are the three main things that you need to put on your footer. Uh, links to your pages, like I said before. Social links are extremely, extremely important. I forgot to mention that uh, before, but they are extremely important. Uh, and a contact form. Or an email address uh, with a phone number so that they can reach you. Uh, and basically, that is it. So go ahead and ask more questions because I know that you guys love it. Okay, so we have a, an amazing question question by Kristen asking, can I duplicate certain designs from site to site? No, the answer is unfortunately no, um, but we are looking into developing it. Uh, right now we can copy a certain animation from page to page within a site, but not from site to site. Uh, what we hope to have is right now we're working on having predefined 
uh, designs, uh, but we are, we're, and we're going to release it, release it hopefully very soon. Um, but after we manage to launch these predefined designs, we would like to also incorporate um, a, a really cool feature where you design a certain, uh, a certain element and you want to keep it so that you can use it for other websites. Okay, so we have another question here. Why is the why should we put the contact form in the footer? Okay, um, of course you see a lot of designs where um, where we see contact forms in the in the footer. It's always nice to have a way to contact uh, the owner. Um, imagine you know what having a contact form in the footer is simply, let's say you want to order from somewhere and you have an application for that, okay? You want to ask a question, you want to be contacted, okay? You don't need to click anywhere, you can just simply be contacted uh, at the end of the website. Simple as that. Now, please pay attention to what I'm going to tell you right now, okay? You have the content line, whatever's in the content, whatever's above the content line is your whole website, Okay, and between the content line and the footer line is your footer. Do not mistake between the two, okay? Don't put your whole website between the content content and the footer. Put your website above the content line and the footer below the content line, okay? I've seen many websites where the whole website is below the content line. Uh, so in other words, the whole website is inside the footer and it is a really, 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 I would say even hell to bring the whole website up. So please pay attention not to make the same mistakes. Um, so yes, having a footer, uh, having a contact form uh, at the footer um, is an amazing way to just tell the user, hey, this is me, contact me so I can help you. It's also a good selling selling point, a good call to action as, as they say. Okay, we have a cool question from Patrick. Um, how can I create a link to the sitemap? Um, if you want to create a link to the sitemap itself, then there is a link where at the end of the website, at the end of the domain name, okay, you type, this is the freelancers.com uh, slash sitemap.xml. This is my sitemap. Now, I don't know if you want to link it, link anything from your website to the sitemap. Webidoo creates the sitemap uh, on its own, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, sitemap, just for, for you guys to let you know, this is going to be on a, uh, in, a few, in a few webinars. Uh, sitemaps, is a, it's not that important to uh, mess around or change the sitemap. Sitemap is just a, it just gathers um, a sitemap of your website, all the URLs, all, all the domains, all the subdomains, uh, so that uh, Google can crawl all the pages and knows which pages are active, which pages are not, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so we have here a question, an issue from Anna. So I'm just going to go very quickly throughout a few questions, uh, the most important one. So, um, Hello, I'm having issues in making a parallax animation fixed, uh, just with the fade in effect. The effect work, but however I try, there's always some motion that I can't evade. Thank you. Number one, we do not, parallax animation doesn't work with, I'm, well, it works, but when you're designing a header, when you're putting parallax animation, do not, put, and, and you want it to be fixed, do not put any fixed uh, function, okay? If you want to put a fixed function, this is why we have the delay after. So number one, you put, let's, I'm just going to do the example with the shape. So the shape fit to width, okay? After, the first thing that you need to do in terms of adding a certain animation is fade to 100% because you want it to fade to at the beginning. This is the first thing that you want to do. It's the order. And then you're going to put a delay after a certain amount uh, of pixels. Now, generally, a lot of people they put uh, the whole, more than the whole length of the, their website, um, but please make sure that the line starts at the top of the shape fit to width because you want the top of the website to reach the top of the shape fit to width and then start your animation. 
Okay, so we have a question question from Kristen. Kristen, is there a way? Is there an easy way to put the full site navigation in the footer every page listed? The only thing that you need to do if you want it to be repeated on all pages is just click, uh, right click on the element, and you're going to see the option of repeat on all pages. As you can see here, repeat on all pages. So it's going to repeat on all pages. Okay. Now, also something to watch out for is that the repeat on all pages, if you move the element that has this function, every element that is repeated on all pages, because it's one element to repeat it, is going to move as well. Thank you very much for coming to the webinar. I hope this was, uh, it was cool. Uh, I hope you all liked it. Um, again, feel free to email us uh, to tell us how you thought of, a, a, of, the, of this webinar. Um, I was very happy to give it to you. And please, um, I, I hope to have more webinars like these. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to dive into the more complicated um, functionalities of WebEDU. Okay, so I'm very excited as well. Um, so thank you very much. I'll see you next week uh, for our webinar. Stay cool. And thank you again for coming to the webinar.